ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम माय बाउ टू द लॉर्ड वसुदेवा जॉय टू यू फ्रेंड्स वी आर इन द सेकंड चैप्टर ऑफ द भगवत गीता Stanza 21 How can one who knows the true self to be imperishable everlasting unborn and unchanging imagine that this self can cause destruction to another self O pata arjuna who is slaying whom when you engage in the struggle the battle of life and it is a battle people Somebody said to me the other day all I want is peace well sure everybody would like peace but peace is not won by giving up the struggle peace is not won by running away peace is not won by surrendering um you must uh, you must stand up to truth you must understand stand up for truth and uh, if uh, I remember Yogananda saying to one of his uh, women disciples that uh, if somebody were to say to you I saw Yogananda dead drunk on Main Street the other day. You would say, "Oh, really? Is that so?" Because you like peace, you will agree with anyone, but you've got to stand up for what you believe in. Loyalty is absolutely essential if you're going to grow. It doesn't mean you have to get into a big fight with him, but just be very firm and tell him you're wrong and stand up for your beliefs and stand up for the people to whom you are loyal. Stand up for your principles. This is a very important part if you don't have a straight spine metaphorically especially you will not be able to get go through life freely people who go too smoothly with the currents will never uh, achieve the victory that we're talking about here because uh, everything finally depends on being absolutely firm as to the final reality To be loyal to God means to be loyal to truth. To be loyal to truth means to be loyal to everything that is right morally, ethically, in every other way. Stand up for what you believe in. And you don't have to fight necessarily, but you have to fight in some way. For example, I have uh, chosen to fight against delusion. I've chosen to fight for truth by explaining uh the truths and the mistakes that people make and this has been my life battle i could have said no i'd rather go to a cave and meditate in fact that's what i wanted to do it's my guru who pushed me this way but i have always wanted to help people to know how to get out of the suffering that they go through it just pains me to see so many people even when they think they're happy they're not really happy i remember when i got autobiography of a yogi it was in this bookstore in New York and uh, I I paid for it and was holding it and this friend of mine from high school was I just happened to meet him in the store and uh, he was talking about the wonderful future that he had and uh, and in radio at that time television hadn't come along yet and uh, I just was clutching this book more and more closely to him the happiness he was thinking of was to me hell i couldn't imagine a worse way of living than a compromise with the ideals that i was seeking and so i have fought very hard all my life but not with swords not with bombs not with cannons i have fought with truth and i am very keen to help people to understand that uh, there are certain ways of living that will make you that will give you what you want. I don't ever try to convert people. I've always said to my audiences that I'm only trying to convert you to your own higher self. I don't care what guru you follow, what path you follow, but I do want you to understand that by love of God you will find who you really are and what you really want. But if you turn your back on truth, you will suffer. And what's the point of suffering? It hurts me when you suffer. because i'm in you too so we have this we have this need each one of us to get out of the darkness as krishna says in the bhagavad gita 
Oh, Arjuna, get away from my ocean of suffering and misery. We need to understand the goal of life, which is to find that true self. Now, when we die, we leave all the self-importance that we gather around us, but we don't leave ourselves, and that desire for self-importance will follow us. But what's there so important about being important? I've always enjoyed anything that will help to make me feel unimportant. I remember I was at a big uh, conference in, I think it was West Virginia, and uh, somebody was wanting to start a community. I, he invited a number of well-known people, and I was one of them. And uh, we were all supposed to help promote this idea. I was the only one in the whole group of teachers who had actually started a community and uh, knew what I was talking about. I invited a number of these people out to dinner uh, in a restaurant, and some of them were better known than I because they were on the lecture circuit and touring around and being seen by thousands of people. It made them all feel very self-important. Here, I was the host of this dinner, and people paid absolutely no attention to me. They were all talking to each other and ignoring me, who was the only one who really knew the subject of the conference at least. I didn't feel at all offended. I felt absolutely blissful about it. I said, it's so nice to be completely ignored, to realize how unimportant you are. Anything that makes you, that reduces your sense of, uh, of self-importance helps to boost your sense, uh, yourself, your sense of real self. I don't need to have people say that I've done a good job. I don't need to have people tell me I have this, that, or the other thing right, or do this or that, and the other thing well. It just doesn't matter. Do everything to please God. Yes, you don't want to offend people. Yes, you want to be uh, um, gracious to everybody and help to make people happier and wiser and all those things. But do it above all to please God. Because sooner or later, people will really resent you for doing good. They'll resent you for trying to help them. They enjoy their delusions. And although I'm committed to helping them to see that they are in delusion, I would not be surprised if they did what, they, what Jesus said they would do to, that the swine would do to you if you cast your pearls before them, turn again and rend to you. It's just human nature. You have to accept that if you're wanting to help anybody. But remember that the real help that you can give people is to not be important, not be looked up to. Don't think, am I doing a good job, except am I pleasing God? You will find that the more you have of that thought, the more people will be benefited by. And you won't benefit everybody, and the people you benefit may be a minority even. You can't expect the majority to seek God. It, said, it says in the Bhagavad Gita that out of a thousand, one seeks me. And out of thousands who seek me, one, perchance, knows me. Don't look for quality except in the pleasure of God. When God can speak to you, as it says earlier in this chapter, as if smiling, that is the most satisfying thing of all. Joy to you.